Hello readers. Today we're going to read a story called Dumpling Soup. It's written by Jama Kim Radigan and illustrated by Lillian Hsu Flanders. There's a glossary at the bottom of this page. In Sky Sisters, you learn some words in the Anishinaabe Ojibwe language. This glossary has words in four languages, Hawaiian, Japanese, Korean, and English. What do you think that tells us about the settings and characters we'll read about in Dumpling Soup? Every year on New Year's Eve, my whole family goes to Grandma's house for Dumpling Soup. My aunties and uncles and cousins come from all around Oahu. Most of them are Korean, but some are Japanese, Chinese, Hawaiian, or Hali, Hawaiian for white people. Grandma calls our family chop suey, which means all mixed up in pigeon. I like it that way. So does Grandma. More spice, she says. This year, since I'm seven, Grandma says I can help make dumplings too. Everybody in my family loves to eat, so we have to make lots and lots of dumplings. You've just learned some important things about the main character. She lives in Oahu, which is in Hawaii. What do you know about her family? The night before New Year's Eve, <clears throat> Grandma, Auntie Elsie, Auntie Ruth, and Auntie Grace come to our house to work on the filling. My mother has bought great big piles of beef, pork, and vegetables to fill the dumplings and special dumpling wrappers from the Gum Chu Lao Noodle Factory in Honolulu. Everyone brings her own cleaver and cutting board and sits at the kitchen table, chopping and talking, chopping and talking, late into the night. Too much gossip, says Grandma in Korean. Mince that cabbage, more bean sprouts. It is her recipe, so she's very picky. What about me? I want to help. Tomorrow, Marissa, answers Grandma. You can help us wrap. So tonight, I watch Grandma mix everything in a big metal pan, more tofu, more onion, more salt, more soy sauce. My aunties keep working, and I fall asleep listening to the chop, chop, pounding, chop, scrape, scrape. Later, when my mother wakes me up to go to bed, her hands smell like garlic. The next morning, I am the first one up. I wake up my brother, Hiram. Then together, we tiptoe to my mother and father's room. Get up, get up, it's New Year's Eve. We have to go to Grandma's to wrap the mandu. Not yet, my mother says with her eyes still closed. Please wait until the sun comes up, says my father. But we are too excited to sleep. Today, everyone will be at Grandma's. We will see cousins we haven't seen all year and we will stay up all night. Hiram will help my uncles with the fireworks. But best of all, I will learn to wrap dumplings for dumpling soup. When we finally get to Grandma's, other aunts who live near <clears throat> Mahiawa have already started wrapping. All of Auntie Faye's dumplings are rectangles, and she lines them up like soldiers. Auntie Ruth pinches her dumplings along the edges to make them look fancy. Auntie Grace puts more filling in the middle than anyone else. I like the fat ones, she says. Okay, Marissa, these are for you. Grandma places a small stack of wrappers in front of me. My mother pushes her bowl of finger dipping water closer. I want to make good dumplings. I want to show my aunties. I try to copy them, but sometimes I put too much filling in the middle. Sometimes I don't put enough water along the edges. My dumplings look a little funny, not perfect like the ones my aunts have made. What if no one wants to eat them? I feel Grandma's hand on my shoulder and look up. Chaku hai bora, Marissa. I don't understand all of Grandma's Korean, but I can tell by her face what she's saying. Don't worry, keep trying. Soon there are trays and trays of beautifully wrapped dumplings all over the kitchen. They look like hundreds of baby bottoms wrapped in diapers, powdered on the outside. Mine look a little sad, all different lumpy shapes. 
One by one, my mother tosses all of them into grandma's biggest pot full of boiling water. That's an interesting description. How does comparing the dumplings to baby bottoms and diapers help you imagine what they look like? If you've had Korean style dumplings, is this description a good one? When the dumplings are cooked, they float up, wrinkled and shiny. Grandma calls my father for the official taste test. No one knows spices like he does. He bites into one of the cooled dumplings, <clears throat> chews slowly and wrinkles his forehead. What, too my wo? Too spicy hot? My mother is anxious. Sin gu wa? Not enough salt? Or ja? Too salty? He gobbles up the rest of the dumpling, smiling and nodding. Mmm, oh no, one more to make sure. I watch the pot carefully for my dumplings. There they are. But some float up without their wrappers and others look like they lost their filling. Grandma scoops all of them into a colander to cool. We'll eat your mandu later, she tells me. But I worry that they are bad mandu and that no one will want to eat them. Is Grandma putting them away so they won't spoil the soup? Maybe it's bad luck to eat ugly, ugly dumplings on New Year's. <clears throat> Before I can ask her, more relatives knock on the door. They come from far away, from Kanoe, Kahala, and Wailei. Now, Wahiawa, which means place of noise in Hawaiian, becomes a place of big noise. I hold the screen door open for all of the aunties carrying heaping plates of food. Watch out, coming through. They bring homemade sushi, chun, and sashimi. Auntie Mori arrives last with a special treat, Japanese mochi. Mo she says mochi means to stay in your stomach for a long time. Mochi zuki means full moon. The little cakes do look like white moons, and the sweet chewy bites feel so good in our stomachs. Mochi help keep the family stuck together, my uncle Myung Ho says after swallowing seven in a row. Marissa says mochi is Japanese. I also know sushi and sashimi are Japanese foods and jun is Korean. It looks like having people of many nationalities in your family means having lots of different foods. More cars drive up. Now they line the whole street. By six o'clock, grandma's front steps are covered with big, medium, and little slippers, sandals, and shoes. So many yangs. What does this big illustration tell you about the setting? How does it compare with the street where you live? New Year's Eve is the only night in the whole year we're allowed to stay up all night. Grandma told us that in Korean, if you fell asleep before midnight, your eyebrows would turn snowy white. But staying awake is easy for us. We never run out of games. Let's hug Grandma, shouts my howly cousin, Maxie. This is our favorite game. We line up in front of Grandma. When it is my turn, I stretch my arms to reach around her bouncy, soft tummy and then rest my head against it. She laughs, <clears throat> and my head bobs up and down. My grandma is like a warm pillow. Inside and out, everyone finds something fun to do. We play a game we can play only on New Year's. Shoe store. We go to the front steps. I'll be the shoe store lady, shouts Carrie. The rest of us take turns trying on our favorite styles. Do you have these gold slippers in size 50 and a half? Asked Maxie. Aren't these red high heels just perfect with my Moo Moo? Alicia shows off. After a while, all the slippers and shoes get mixed up and seem to be walking all over Grandma's yard. Since it has gotten so late, we really should pick them up, but we're too tired. When it's almost midnight, we hear Hiram and the older cousins running to poke big sparklers into the grass. Why do you think there are so many shoes on grandma's doorstep? Do people take off their shoes before or after they enter your house or your apartment? 
Somebody check the clock, orders Hiram. Alicia presses her face against the screen door. 12 minutes to 12, she yells. All of a sudden, it is almost time and everybody moves quickly. From every corner of the house, the Yangs come. Everyone finds a place to stand on the cool grass. All the cousins gather under the lychee tree. The babies rub their eyes and whine. My Chinese cousin Helen says fireworks scare away the evil spirits. We want good luck in the coming year. Grandma takes one last look around to make sure everyone is there. For a moment, the only sound is the shush of the hapu plants. Goodbye, old year, I whisper. Finally, we count down the seconds till midnight. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Thousands of firecrackers explode, filling the sky with smoke. All up and down Grandma Street, there is popping and snapping. Our eyes water and our ears ring. Hiram and I run to light all the sparklers and then write our names in the night sky. Cousins, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and friends hug and shake hands. Finally, Grandpa calls, Polly, mo gupsita, time for dumpling soup. If we eat first thing on New Year's Day, we won't go hungry for the rest of the year, my father reminds us. The table is set with deep bowls and big spoons. Eh, says Uncle Myung Ho, what kind man do this? I quickly look in some of the bowls. Oh no, Grandma has put one of my funny looking dumplings in each. Must be the ones Risa made, says Hiram. They look like little elephant ears. Everybody laughs. My face feels hot. What do you think it means when Marissa says her face feels hot? How do you think she feels? Uncle Myung Ho blows on his spoon and takes a bite. Oh no, Marisa, delicious. Grandma walks over. Her bowl is full of my mandu. I've been waiting all night to taste these, she said. Here, have one. She puts another funny looking triangle in my bowl. We bite into our dumplings at the same time. I go chum, she says. This is the best mandu I have ever tasted. I finish my funny looking dumpling. Mmm, grandma's right. It is good. The spices tickle my tongue. Who wants more of Marissa's mandu? Grandma asks. Everybody holds out his bowl. I hold out my bowl too. More dumplings, more lip smacking chicken broth. Warm, steamy, and delicious. With our dumplings, we eat roast pork, three kinds of kimchi, spinach and bean sprout namu, spicy seaweed, tagu, boiled tripe, and octopus. Hiram and I love the Korean dessert we get only on New Year's, yak pep. He pulls off a chunk of the brown sticky rice mixed with honey, dates, and pine nuts and hands it to me. I lick every bite off my fingers. Your elephant ears sure tasted better than they looked, he says to me. I think about how much Everyone liked the dumpling soup, even my funny dumplings. Maybe it was because we ate them at grandma's, all of us together. Next year, I tell everyone, I will make even better dumplings. I can hardly wait. Hello, brand new year. My family wearing new clothes for the new year. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the story.